Hello and welcome back. I am Chris with Marksman Shooting Sports in Westfield, Indiana, and you are watching Marksman TV. Today's video is a tabletop review and comparison of the CZ Bren 805S1 carbine and what I'll call the generic AR-15. Now this is a Colt M4A1 SOCOM. Uh, this one is from 2016. It is not the newer 2018 model. There are a few differences there. This is another in the series of AR-15 versus the world, if you will. Kind of looking at modern sporting rifles or modern semi-automatic versions of, of military rifles and seeing how they stack up against the tried and true AR-15, which has pretty much been dominating the uh, semi-automatic sporting rifle landscape in the United States, at least since the 70s. So now when we get into the spring, we will do a shooting comparison for right now it's just a tabletop review anyway if that all sounds interesting to you please stick around that's coming up now Okay, so jumping into this, the CZ Bren 805S1 carbine is the civilian or semi-automatic version of the Bren 805 that did enter the Slovak Army service in 2014 when it would replace the VZ Model 58. Now, in 2015, the Czech Republic would go to the Model 806, which we are anticipating a civilian semi-automatic carbine to be hitting the market, hopefully anytime. Uh, they do have the pistol variants that have come out within the past year. So, of course, you can get those in the pistol barrel length configuration and 5.56, 300 blackout, and 7.62 by 39. Now, per CZ's website, the S1 carbines have been discontinued, which is a little bit upsetting <laughs> because these are actually excellent rifles. Now, these will retail in between about the $1,500 and $1,800 mark. Of course, as these become harder to find, I'm sure that will increase in value even used. AR-15s, uh, like I said, this is the Colt SOCOM uh, M4A1. These would retail new in about the twelve dollars to $1,400 range, but you could get these, uh, of course, this is sort of, you know, meant to be a stand-in, uh, sort of for the generic AR-15 in general, uh, but Anyway, you can get ARs as low as, you know, the $500 mark for the M&P 15 Sports, as well as, you know, sky is a limit. Now, this is a DI or direct impingement. Some people would argue it is a gas piston because of the gas expansion chamber and all that, how that works. I'm just, for the purposes of this video, gonna keep it simple and call this a direct impingement, where you just have a standard gas tube, which interfaces gases directly hit the gas key over the bolt carrier group, which cycles the action. The 805 Bren is a short stroke gas piston. So you do have a piston up in here. Now, keep in mind, you can get the AR-15 platform in a short stroke gas piston if you like. Uh, those will generally be a little bit more expensive up into the 1500 plus range like you see on the Bren 805. So you can make it an apples to apples comparison in terms of price point if you want that uh, piston system. I know uh, Daniel Defense, LWRC, uh, as well as others, uh, SIG, make really great uh, short stroke gas piston AR platforms. So you can look into those if you're interested in that idea. Now, of course, the advantages of a gas piston are that you're not getting all the sort of fouling and gas blowback into the receiver that you do in a direct impingement. So obviously gases are entering the receiver via the gas tube. On a piston, everything's pretty much staying fixed right up here. Now you do need to also maintain the gas tube. It doesn't mean that it's a maintenance-free system, but at least it keeps all the carbon buildup out of the receiver where it can, you know, kind of impede on the traveling of the bolt carrier group as the fouling gets more and more uh, severe between cleaning so you do get that advantage now with that usually you get a couple negatives one is you have a little bit more complexity up here at the front end it does also add to the front end weight of the rifle also with that again you get a higher price point such as if you get into a, a short stroke gas piston AR you are going to pay a little bit more for that like I said up into the $1,500 plus mark now, bringing these two in for a little bit more of a direct comparison, both of these options do feature a cold hammer forged and chrome lined barrel. You have the one half by 28 thread pitching on both. Now on the AR-15, you do have a little bit of a heavier profiled barrel on this option. Uh, government profile will have a slimmer profile underneath the handguard and a thicker profile outside of the handguard. You do notice the M203 grenade launcher cut out here with the standard you know, military parkerizing finish here. A2 birdcage flash hider, so you do have everything around the six o'clock position shut off with the vents around from the three to the nine. Uh, that is to, of course, mitigate any blowback or anything down into dust or dirt to kick up any type of uh, 
uh, sand or anything that can make a visual signature of yourself from a further distance away. Um, but also it sort of has a cuts compensator type of effect where your gases are all directed upwards, which the counteraction is by pushing your muzzle downwards. So you do have that on there. On the 805, you do have something a little bit similar. So you will notice the six o'clock and the 12 o'clock are cut off. All your gas being blown out to either side at the three and the nine o'clock. These are very nice muzzle brakes. They do a good job, especially in the 556, which is very low uh, recoiling round anyway. So. Now here you do have a pencil profile, which is going to be lighter, of course, so you're gonna have a little bit less weight up here at the front end, and I'll do an overall weight here in a minute. Uh, of course, with the pencil profile barrel, you are gonna get heat uh, building up a little bit quicker than you would on something a little bit thicker like you get here. Now, on an AR-15, you can go with a pencil profile. That's totally fine. In fact, the early M16A1s were built on a pistol profile. Uh, again, not as good for heat dispersion, also a little bit less rigid if you were to bump it into something you could damage your barrel a lot easier than you would on something in a government or a H-bar profile. Now the twist rate on both of these is a one in seven right hand, which is best for stabilizing a 55 grain projectile. Of course on the AR-15, you can get anything you want from a one in seven, a one in nine, a one in 12. Uh, even the earlier uh, M16s, the 601 had a one in 14 twist barrel. So uh, any way you wanna go there. Now the original 805 Bren did, does have a relatively easy quick change barrel for caliber conversions. You could also change out the twist rate if you wanted to do that. Uh, so it's it's not that complicated of a process. Okay, so moving back into the front sight bases, this has the standard A2 front sight base, which doubles as its gas block, which is here. Now, being a direct impingement gun, obviously gases will travel up through the gas tube back and then hit the front of the gas key on top of the bolt carrier group, and that's how that works. Now, you do have a, you know, obviously your sight tower here. If most ARs will come sort of in this configuration, it's very difficult to take this off. Uh, you can with a tool to drive out these taper pins. A little bit difficult, but can be done. You will still have to put on a sightless gas block. Now, the front sight base is uh, elevation adjustable by rotating it up and down, which I will show you in a minute. Now, up here on the Bren 805, this is the gas block. Of course, this is the gas plug, which you can turn and remove to take out your gas piston assembly. Now, the front sight on this is on top of a 1913 rail, which does travel the full length of the top of the receiver. And it's going to work very much like an AR-15 front sight. To illustrate that here on the AR-15, you can see a little detent there, which you can push down with the tip of a bullet or a punch, and then you can swivel that post up and down to change your elevation. And you can see the front sight on the Bren 805 working very much the same way. You can also, if you want to, push on this little button and fold that down out of your way if you're running any type of optic. You don't want that there. You can push that down. Also, you can remove it entirely. Very A lot easier than on the AR-15. Now the front handguards on the AR-15 on here, I have a Knight's Armament RAS or Rail or RIS Rail Interface System Quad Rail on here, which is going to add a little bit of weight. Standard AR-15s typically come with a CAR-15 or a polymer uh, heat shielded front handguard. You can go either way you want, or you can get like a Magpul M-Lock or anything with a key mod. Uh, so the opportunities there are pretty much endless. You can customize it however you want to. Up here on the Bren 805, this is sort of a monolithic receiver. The handguard and uh, the receiver are all one piece of aluminum or it's an alloy upper receiver. And like I said, you have the rail traveling the full length of the top of the receiver. And then you do have a rail section down here on the bottom as well, if you want to run a forward hand grip or anything like that. Now, moving a little bit back into the receivers, like I said, this is all a monolithic piece. Now the bottom part here is polymer. You can't switch out the pistol grip for anything else. It's all a singular piece, but you can take this off and they do make different magazine adapters or different lowers. So you can use like the SIG 551 uh, uh, magazine well for the, uh, for those magazines as well if you want to. Here is the safety selector, which does toggle at a 45 degree angle and it is ambidextrous. White is safe and red is dead or fire. Your ejection port on the 805 is on the right hand side and it does have a shell deflector here. Even though you can move the, the charging handle over to this side, the ejection port is always just on the right hand side of the firearm. As mentioned, the charging handle here, it does reciprocate during firing. This is a very smooth bolt throw. I really like that a lot. You can take that handle off and switch it over to the other side very easily. You do have to take that charging handle out for disassembly anyway, so you can go ahead and do that. The rear sight is a flipping rear sight as well, and you can completely remove it if you do want to run an optic. can just 
by pushing this button and fold it down out of your way too. Does have two aperture settings. Also, you can change your windage here on the backside as well. Now the AR-15, like most that you are going to find, is two halves of 7075T6 aluminum, usually type three hard coat anodized, unless you're looking at like the Omni Hybrid, which has a polymer lower receiver. Your ejection port is typically going to be on the right-hand side. You can find AR-15s with the ejection port on the left-hand side if you are a left-handed shooter, but that's up to you. Shell deflector and dust cover are pretty standard military features, as well as the forward assist, which, is pretty singularly uh, known for being on the AR-15. It's kind of a, it's a debate of whether this is a useful feature or not. But anyway, if your bolt fails to go completely into battery, you can go ahead and assist it forward without having to completely bring the charging handle and the bolt to the rear. Speaking of which, the charging handle is sitting on the back of the receiver and you can use it either by grabbing around both handles of the little T-hook here on the back or you can just grab it with one hand which is what most people tend to do anyway. It is inherently ambidextrous since it is sitting directly square on the back of the receiver. Now on this one I do have my safety selector it set up as an ambidextrous control. Typically you only find it on the left hand side of the receiver. It does have a 90 degree toggle as opposed to the 45 degree uh, movement which you see on the 805 Brent. The pistol grips are not a monolithic piece so you can remove it and switch it out with anything else that you want and of course these do take Stanag or P mags just like the 805 brand they do share the same magazine capabilities there as well magazine release sitting on the right hand side and is not ambidextrous of course on the top of the receiver typically what you are going to find is just a a flat top or a 1913 rail so you can run any type of optic here on the back that you want to illuminated optics uh, red dots scopes anything you like and of course with the combination of my handguard here it's sort of a single uh, setup with a with the 1913 rail uh, similarly to what we have here on the 805 Bren. Now bringing in the butt stocks of these, now this is gonna be one of the big hindrances of the AR-15 is you have to have a buffer tube. Of course your buffer, buffer, your buffer and your buffer spring are back here in the tube, which is basically harnessing your recoil and returning the bolt carrier group into action after its cycle. So you have to have that there without it. There's really no way of fitting all that in here. Now, some people have done interesting designs like the SIG MCX and all that sort of stuff, but a little bit of a departure from the standard off the shelf AR-15 you're gonna find. Now on here, on the carbine variants, you get a six position adjustable stock. You can get them in a rifle configuration with a fixed like, A2 style or A4 stock. So those options are there avail available to you. There are a myriad of different variations of stocks like the Magpul stocks, BCM stocks, anything like that that you want to put on here. Very, very simple just to throw the little locking lever down and then the stock comes right off the buffer tube. Put on anything else there in its place that you want to. So very, again, very modular. Now because the recoil spring and everything is housed inside the receiver of the Bren 805, you don't need to use any type of buffer tube system back here. So your stock is free of any of that. It is a adjustable stock, not as, in my opinion, user friendly as the AR but very similar. Uh, you do have a cheek riser here, which you can remove and flip over to the other side if you want to. So that's uh, totally available there for you too. Really nice feel. Uh, I can't really uh, argue which one's better than the other. They both get the job done. Like I said, six position here. Now the one advantage of not having a buffer tube is you can employ a side folder. So, you know, really good for storage or if you're inside a vehicle or anything like that, you have that uh, option available to you. So I do like the availability or the use of a side folder, just a nice feature to have. And really one of the, a lot of people say one of the biggest hindrances of the AR design is the fact you can't get away from that buffer tube. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the weight starting here with the CZ Brand 805. I do have an empty magazine loaded. And we are sitting at eight pounds, six ounces. Bringing in the AR-15 in the same configuration or with an empty magazine installed. Make sure that I'm balancing on here. We are at seven pounds, eight ounces. So we are about a full pound lighter on the AR-15. That's one of the great things about the AR platform is they are so lightweight. Um, of course, if you put things like a quad rail on here, you're gonna get the weight up. With a standard uh, CAR 15 handguard, you're gonna lose a little bit of the weight there. If you went up to a gas piston, you're gonna be adding a little bit of weight there. So it's always a give and take, but a full pound, when you're talking about a firearm, something you're gonna try and keep up on target or carry over a long distance or 
you know, keep on your shoulder for a while. A pound actually does make quite a difference there. It doesn't sound like a lot on paper, but it does in all practical terms. Okay, now let's go ahead and take a look at the trigger weight of both. We have four pounds, 0.4 ounces on the 805. And on the AR-15, this is just a single stage, standard just mill spec trigger. Most of what you're gonna find on most things off the shelf. Four pounds, 4.3. So we are about four ounces lighter on the 805, and I will tell you picking them up and handling them, the trigger on the 805 is just nicer in general. It's a lot smoother, with just a nicer reset. Um, definitely a, a, an upgrade over just a standard off the shelf AR-15 trigger. Okay, let's go ahead and do a field strip. An AR-15, very, very simple. Uh, we'll go ahead and remove the magazine, check that we are clear. You push the captive, pin here in the back, and then you can rotate the upper off the lower. If you want to, you can go ahead and push out the pivot pin as well, and go ahead and just separate the two halves entirely. Go ahead and grab the ch charging handle, pull that out. That relieves your bolt out the back, which you can remove. Charging handle comes out, and that's essentially a field strip. If you want to, you can go even further by disassembling the bolt carrier group, but this is basically just a basic field strip there. Okay, now for the field strip of the 805 Bryn, we'll go ahead and remove the magazine and check that we are clear, and we are. So, there is a single pin here at the front keeping your whole trigger group module in place. Go ahead and push that in and out. It is not capped. Set it aside, lift up and out, and there's your kind of trigger group frame. Now, you're going to find another pin just like it towards the back. Go ahead and, it's a little stiff, push on that. And then that'll allow that to come out. We'll go ahead and set that aside. Now there is a button here on the back of the stock. You can go ahead and push on that and then down on the stock and that'll release out the back. Pull back on your charging handle and there is your recoil spring and guide rod and your bolt carrier or the uh, the uh, charging handle will come off the bolt carrier which will allow then the bolt carrier and bolt to come out. So that is essentially a field strip there. Now, if you want to, you can remove the gas piston by pushing on this little plunger and then rotating the gas plug around. That will then allow that to turn all the way around. And then the gas plug will come off and then you can bring your gas piston out as well if you wanna clean that. Now, one thing I do like about this gas piston system is that everything is captive. If you look at a lot of the older uh, gas piston designs, short stroke gas piston, piston designs, I uh, usually have a separate series of rods and springs that can come out in multiple pieces. I like that this is all encapsulated in one removable component there that you can maintain and take care of. Uh, you will need to remove this from time to time to clean it out as of course all your gases are hitting the gas piston here. So uh, even from being test fired at the factory, it's got some gunk on it. Clean out the gas tube and all that from time to time as well, but generally less maintenance than a DI gun. Well, that is all the time I have for you today on these. Thank you so much for stopping by and checking out this video. If you have any questions, please leave those down in the comments section. If you want to see more videos like this, please consider subscribing to my channel. And don't forget to hit that bell notification button so you can be aware when we are posting new content. And if you enjoyed this video, please let me know by hitting that like button. Anyway, guys, I am Chris with Marksman Shooting Sports in Westfield, Indiana. You are watching Marksman TV, and I will see you next time.